All right, Adam, you wanted me to take a look at your log, see if I have any thoughts, so let's check it out. Okay, so popping open the log, first thing I want to do is just take a cursory look around. Uh, looks like it's a Radix uh, target or flight controller on beta flight uh, 3.2.4. So that's, that's something we'll, we'll talk about here in a second. And uh, so let's go into the uh, header file here and take a look. I did browse around here before and started looking at some of your filtering. It looks like you have basically the default filtering and the dynamic notch is not enabled. Um, so we want to fix that. I think the first thing you're going to want to do, and you, you sent me a message earlier looking at the, the targets um, or the hex files I had out there. Those hex files aren't going to work um, for your board because it's a Radix. They have their own custom hex files. So what you want to do, and I'll drop this link down below, is you're going to want to go to Brain FPVs. Uh, GitHub repository. So you go into their codes page and then under the codes page you'll go to releases. Essentially what they do is they copy Betaflight. Their OSD is a vector based OSD and instead of just making the target and contributing it to Betaflight you know, as a part of the main they decided to copy it and then just do it as a side thing which is fine. It's more work for them but nevertheless um, you, you want to download these hex files so you can see they have Betaflight 3.5. The ones that you were looking for were Betaflight 4.0. You're, you're probably just going to have to wait until Betaflight uh, 4.0 comes out in stable release, and then I'm sure uh, Brain FPV will, will, will pull those over and, and make a, uh, a Radix hex file. So, anyways, you would download this Radix hex file. Uh, you go into the firmware flash. You go ahead and hit click local. You'd pick where you you'd pick that hex file wherever you download it, and you'd flash that up to your board. So that's probably something you're gonna want to want to do. In either case, um, you're gonna want to turn on your dynamic notch. So let's go back over to here real quick. Okay, so once you're either flashed over or and maybe you decide to stay on Beta Flight 3.2.4, that's fine. Um, hit the configuration tab. And you're going to want to go down and in either case turn on the dynamic notch. Now, the dynamic notch is in 3.2.4. It's also in 3.5, but it's um, it's improved about I would say 60 to 70 percent of the way. The remaining 30 percent of the way, uh, those improvements are going to come out. Those are in the text files I had, but um, those are going to come out in, in January uh, uh, 2019. So. You might have to wait till then, but you know, hey, getting you know sixty percent of the way or seventy percent of the way, that that's that's pretty good, right? And then that that last thirty percent, hey, just just wait a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. So I would definitely go to three point five. Uh, turn on the notch filter. When you flash up to three point five, the defaults. Uh, I would accept the defaults as is. Uh, you're going to need to you know set up your uh, PID loop speed and, and things of that nature. So let's let's talk about that. Let's flash back over here real quick to that. It says in your post you're 8K, 8K, but that's not what this says down here. It says 3.2, 3.2K synced. And then it also is indicating that you have uh, DSHOT 1200. So your ESCs are able to update a lot faster than the PID loop you're running. Now, if that's by choice, um, they just wanted to run a lower gyro and pid loop speed, that's fine with me. I, I feel there's an argument that anything above 1K, you know, uh, brings more noise and is it worth it or not. Um, but me personally, I run 8K, 8K, your board would support it, and then that would utilize more of your DSHOT 1200 ESCs. Not the full power of them, but. Uh, I think anything above 8K, like the 1632K, there's a heck of a lot more noise to deal with, and I'm not convinced it's really worth it. Depends on the, the uh, mechanical equipment. So let's stay below 8K, 8K. Uh, I would recommend going to 8K, 8K for now. So to do that, again, you would just set this to 8K, 8K here. You're going to have to set everything else up as well. So 
Uh, if you're not familiar with the configurator uh, in great detail, what I used to do is just take screenshots of each pay page and go down through and get, you know, of your receiver and so on and so forth. When it gets to the um, PID tuning tab, I would leave the defaults alone here and um, feed forwards a, a different thing than the set point weight. Um, essentially it does the same thing, but just leave the defaults alone. Uh, I would turn on iTerm Relax, uh, definitely. I would turn on iTerm Rotation, and I would have basically the settings you see here. Smoothing, 5, this, this is my quad, so this is what I would recommend. Same thing for the Receivers tab. I would turn on turn your RC Smoothing to Filter, leave those as Auto, and then going back to the PID tab here, and their Filter settings. I think this is a good starter. I'll turn off the D-Term uh, notch. This would be a good starter for your filter settings. I'm going to drop a link below to 3.4 and 3.5 tuning guides. Uh, read 3.4 first. They talk about some of the new features, iTerm Relax, so on and so forth. I've done some videos on them. Essentially this one you just turn it on, set it to this, you should be good. This one you just turn it on. I wouldn't mess with absolute control just yet. Um, has some filter recommendations, but what I'd like you to do is get it all set up, have your dynamic notch turned on, record a good hard flight, full throttle moves, fly it like you stole it, and then shoot me that log and we'll take a look at your noise and then we'll get these filters tuned out. What's The reason I'm pushing these up to 120 and you might be used to seeing 90, uh, like in your current log here, Let me go back, uh, this has one, uh, three point two only has it option for one low pass filter where you can see in 3.4 and 5 you can have two low pass filters on the gyro and the d-term 3.2 you can't do that and there's good reasons why that is good um, and why those are added I won't go into that depth now just for the interest of a, a shorter video but I'm more than happy to share but anyways you'll see how it's 90 here and uh, what I'm recommending is you're pushing that up to 120 there's a big latency drop between 90 and 120 in that low pass filter so I like to get up to at least 120 and maybe higher if we can especially with that new dynamic notch improvements uh, it's very viable there's um, we might be able to not have low pass 2 on we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit but we definitely want to have both the low pass filters on the D term just because of how that works with uh, amplifying high frequency uh, noise, any little bit of high frequency noise, the D-term really amplifies it because the slope, uh, not to get into too much detail, the slope of the high frequency noise in the in the gyro trace uh, is steep because it's high frequency and so it amplifies the heck out of it. Okay, so those are some of the the core setups that I would do. That there, uh, I think there's nothing really else in any of the tabs. Obviously, just do your OSD for whatever you want there. Um, looking at, oh, back up one more time here. Before you do the next log, you definitely want to go in and do uh, get debug. And in here, what we want to do is set this to type set debug underscore mode equals FFT underscore FREQ. So we're going to set that as our debug mode. We're going to type save. And then that will, and I don't know for yours if it reboots your flight controller or not, but it probably would. So it will probably reboot your flight controller. You have to go back in. And then you can verify that that's there by typing get debug. And you should be able to see in the setting here that that's set. What that will do is capture some additional data so that when we're looking at the next log, we can see how the dynamic notch is tracking, um, if we need to adjust the Q value at all, and maybe we can reduce that width down a little bit. We can see raw noise, the tracking of the dynamic notch, and I can peel off a lot of information from that. So we can do that. That will give us a good sense of noise. And in your current setup, noise is definitely an issue. So I don't have any, I can't see raw noise, but I can see gyro noise. So this is your gyro roll, gyro pitch, gyro, I'm sorry, roll, pitch, and yaw. Anyways, uh, 
If I hit on roll, you can see you have a bunch of spikes here. So the dynamic notch is not turned on. So once you get outside of these static notches, which are going to be off by default in 3.5, and we want to leave those off. Uh, if you have a good enough dynamic notch, which has been improved, you don't need static notches. Same thing for this D-term notch. We're going to, that's off by default in 3.5. We're going to leave that off. Um, but the, the dynamic notch will get up to around 5, 50, around 550, maybe 600 in Betaflight 3.4. Now in Betaflight 3. Point, or Betaflight 4.0, it can go all the way up to almost 1,000, depending on some of the settings. So you can see it would be able to hit this entire range. But um, I think with the Radix thing, we'll have to wait on that. But nevertheless, we'll get up a lot higher than this is here already. So that's roll. Pitch, we have the same issue. And we have some noise up here that if we have that stage two low pass filter on, not just the 90 uh, hertz low pass filter, we have the 120 and then another one up at probably, um, I don't know, we'll see when we're looking at your noise, but I usually I want to set it up almost above, what, you know, if we still have some peaked out noise here because the dynamic notch isn't going high enough yet on 3.5 for you, we'll probably set the second low pass just below it so it can help crush the remainder of that and it will double double whack because we have two low pass filters in series hitting this noise up here up you know a thousand whatever that is eighteen hundred and then the roll again you can see there's a pretty significant spike there uh, 576 so we definitely want to get that hit that's an indicator too that if your gyro of your uh, flight controller is not soft mounted if you have yaw vibrations on your gyro, I see that when you soft mount your fly controller with bobbins, it really helps with yaw more than anything else. It semi kind of helps a little with pitch and roll, but yaw, it can really just wipe any spikes out based on my experiences with it. But So if you want some tips on what bobbins are, I'm not sure if you're soft mounted already or not, but uh, that might hit that yaw noise and and the dynamic notch is nice because it works independently on all three axes so that alone might hit this 576 it's a little high for the 3.5 threshold but you can take the q value down to like five and really maximize how far it can get up there i did run your log in plasma tree which is basically a noise and pit analyzer and you know that's way too much noise getting through in your current setup on your gyro traces. You can see these spikes are getting through everywhere. Basically, I can tell you that this is where your one static notch is, the other static notch, and this, you know, you can almost tell where the static notches are. The dynamic notch will follow all this stuff, so it will just wipe all that out. It's a real great, you know, that was an amazing feature proposed, I think it was a year ago now, uh, over a little over a year ago. Quite an innovation. So that will help with that. Uh, looking at your PID response, what we need to do is after we get this noise squared away, we need you to, uh, what I normally do is I turn on um, auto level mode. So we come into here and I would set a angle mode on a switch and then so I could turn angle mode on. And then I would also come into the PID tuning tab and I would crank up this angle limit a little bit. So I would set that at maybe like 65 or 70. And what that will do is, uh, what we wanna do is go into it, you can even do a line of sight hover. And to get the proper data for this, so one thing is addressing the noise, that's a flight where it's, like I said, you, you know, fly it like you stole it kind of a thing. But a second flight, uh, so the noise attenuation and setting up your noise filters to be a full flight, you know, as hard as you can, uh, that would be a black box log. Then the PID tuning one would be really a line of sight, turn on angle mode, hover, and you're doing full stick deflection with trying just to be limited to one movement at a time. So just uh, roll right, full stick, and then it will hit up against that angle limit. So it's easier to, you know, you'll hit the angle limit and then you can go back to center position. Full stick left. You know, as fast as, not as I don't know if as fast as you can, but basically you're trying to do it 
as fast as you would if you're flying FPV, you know, in, in uh, acro mode. Same thing for pitch forward, pitch back, and then the tricky one is yaw, full right, yaw, full left. And you would do that a couple times. So you'd uh, full stick right, full stick right, full stick right, left, 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 front, 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 back, 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 raw, yeah, y'all right, y'all left, you get the idea. Then that would be its own black box log. It's probably only going to be 30 seconds. You would download that, run that through plasma tree, and then we can look at these graphs. Um, I have a couple of videos on interpreting these graphs, but these essentially help you tune your PIDs by looking at that. You're not looking too bad here. Honestly, you could probably use a little bit more P. Um, depends if you're having issues. You know, are you really having issues? Because honestly, this hazy blue is just from all the noise and flight. But your, your response coming up to one, and then ideally it's supposed to come up to one at flat line, could be a little stiffer. And you should, could have a little bit of overshoot. But the remainder of it's not too bad. Your yaw is looking real good. Um, so, you know, this isn't, this isn't looking too bad at all. And yeah, I see we have, you know, in some moves here, you have a little bit of prop wash here, so we, could, we can work on that. And I see some other little things with like uh, your inputs uh, from your transmitter and smoothing those, which honestly the defaults will, the RC smoothing defaults will, will take care of that. So a lot of the stuff is the defaults are kind of baked in to uh, address uh, older items. So, okay, well, I hope this was somewhat helpful. I know it didn't give you the, hey, we're at the end of this, we're a perfect tune. It kind of gets onto the path. There's some more steps to be done, but... Um, yeah.